So tonight is a, I would say a not so common Christmas message, probably preached from a not so common Christmas scriptures, depending on how you look at it. But I remember it was the, it was a night that I was asked, it was, a, it was, you know, some days ago I was asked to preach tonight. And that very night I woke up several times from my sleep. Now it wasn't because I was stressed or that I couldn't sleep, but I believe the Holy Spirit kept nudging me. The Holy Spirit kept nudging me to seek him and to speak to him. So every time I woke up, I had this question resting on my heart. The question was, Lord, what is the message? What is it that you would like to speak to us, your church? And I woke up again and no answer. I woke up again and no answer. And the third time I woke up instantly, I heard the word care. I heard the word clearly and instantly, care. So I began to seek the Lord and ask him, Lord, is this, is this a Christmas message or just any message? And I felt the Lord say, this is the Christmas message. That I care for my people. That I love them. That I have a plan for them still. You know, it says in 1 John 4, 9, God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. No, Christmas Day, Christ was born, and this was the day that God expressed his love for us all. He didn't just say it, but he did something. He sent his son. He showed us he loved us by sending his son to die for us. That's how he showed that he cared for us so much. And I believe during this Christmas season, God wants to remind us that he still does care for you, that he still does love you, and he still does have a plan for you. I know that's hard to say, and again, I know because this year has been so difficult for so many of us. So many of us have lost friends or family. So many of us have suffered tragedy. Loved ones that we've lost, that have gone on to be with the Lord. It's been a hard year, I know. And some of us have even come to the point where we ask God this question, God, do you even care about me? 2020 has been so hard for me. Do you even care about my life? Do you see what I'm going through? Do you understand the pain that I'm feeling? Do you care about what's going on in my family? Do you care about what's going on in my city? Do you care about what's going on in our country? God, do you even care? I'm sure many of us have Ask that question maybe in our heart or in our minds to the Lord. But Christmas is the reminder that Jesus indeed does care about us. God cares so much that he would send his only precious son from his home in heaven down to earth to live among us. To, li- to become a human, to leaving the throne room of God to step foot on earth, to be tempted, to suffer and to die. Christmas is that reminder that God cares enough to sacrifice his only son so that he can have a relationship with you. Sometimes we may not think that about Christmas right away, but never forget that God cares for you and Jesus loves you and he cares for you. So this word care, it means this. It's the provision of what is necessary The provision of what is necessary for the health, the welfare, the maintenance, and the protection of someone or something. You want to know what the provision for our health, our spiritual health, for the provision for our protection was? The provision for our salvation, that was Jesus. God cared for us. He cared for us so much that he provided a sacrifice. He brought Jesus down to this earth so that we can be forgiven and set free from sin, so that we can have a brand new start and a brand new life, so that we can live for him again, so that we can be set free from bondages. God cared for us so much that he didn't expect or ask us to provide for our own freedom, but he said, no, I'll provide for your freedom. I will provide for your salvation. I will provide the means so that you can be set free from every bondage and darkness because I care I care for you 
So how does Jesus, how does God care for us? Well, Jesus cares for us, our first point, Jesus cares for us in the storm. Jesus cares for us in the storm. There's a portion of scripture where Jesus, he was, he was teaching and, and at this time he, he turns to his disciples and he said, let's go to the other side of this lake. So as they start sailing off to the other side, they get hit with the very, very fierce storm. So much so that water now starts entering into the boat. It's very, it's very rocky waters. It's funny because Jesus is actually taking a nap in the boat. Just imagine how much confidence and how much power Jesus has to walk with that he is sleeping with water washing all over him and sleeping like a baby. That's some authority. But look what happens. Look what the disciples start questioning. Look at Mark chapter 4, verse 38. I'm going to start reading from there. But Jesus was calmly sleeping in the stern, resting on a cushion. I think it's funny that scripture has to say that he had a little pillow, but... So they, t they shook him awake. They shook him awake saying, teacher, don't you even care that we are all about to die? Fully awake. Fully aware. Fully understanding. Jesus rebukes the storm and shouts to the sea, hush, calm down. All at once, the wind stopped howling and the water became perfectly calm in a moment. Then he turned to his disciples and said to them, why are you so afraid? Haven't you learned to trust yet? But they were overwhelmed with fear and awe and said to one another, who is this man who has such authority that even the wind and waves obey him? Can you believe they asked, they said this to Jesus, don't you even care about us? I think it's funny that sometimes the storm, we think it's intended to kill us, but the enemy knows that the storm is only intended to blind you from the love and care that God has for you. Because if Jesus Christ is in the boat with you, you better believe that boat is not going down. But even if, even if that boat goes down, even if all your plans and everything you had that you knew was supposed to be in 2020, all the great things you had planned and set in stone, even if all of that goes down, Jesus knows how to walk on water. But here's what, what else he'll do. Not only will he walk on water, but he'll teach you how to walk on water. He'll call Peter out of the boat and say, walk on water. The storm's never intended to kill you. It was intended to blind you from the care and love that Jesus has for you. I wonder, what storm did you go through in 2020 that tested your trust for God? Did you question God's love for you? Did you question his care for you? You know, the thing is, how you handle the storms, it either draws you a little further or a little closer in your intimacy with God. It's one or the other. You will either leave the storm with your faith battered, or your faith built up. You, I'm going to say that again. You'll either leave the storm with your faith battered or your faith built up. I've heard people say this coming out of COVID. People that got COVID, they say, I am so glad I got it. How, you know, and that may sound like, whoa, whoa. How can you say that? That sounds so insensitive. You know, there's people right now that are in heaven I'm going to say this. There's people right now that are in heaven with God right now that would have never welcomed or opened their heart to Jesus had they not been in a, in a position or in a, in a scary place in that storm where they face danger and they face fear and they face death. Just think about this. What is more worth it? Some of us have family members right now that we're going to see in heaven Maybe they would have lived a long life. Maybe they would have gone, they would have lived to their old and had many grandchildren and, and all these amazing things, but lost their soul. 
But, they, but some people got COVID and we have testimony after testimony after testimony of them sitting in a bed saying, I can feel the presence of God in this room. My heart is open to him and it doesn't matter what they did because they said this one word, Jesus, I'm crying out to you in the middle of my storm, in the middle of my pain, in the middle of my mess, Jesus, I need you. And God, with all of his mercy, has welcomed them in, home into heaven and said, well done, good and faithful servant. You will either leave the storm with your faith battered or your faith built up. How are you coming out of 2020? How are you coming out of this storm? Are you coming out of the storm with your faith built up or your faith taking a hit? Second point, Jesus cares for us when we face danger. Jesus cares for us when we face danger. Look at John chapter 10, starting from verse 11. I am the good shepherd, Jesus says. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. And the man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. See, Jesus is a good shepherd who's willing to lay down his life for the sheep because he cares for us. And we know this to be true because he went all the way to the cross, all the way to the grave, and still even rose because he cares and loves you. See, Jesus doesn't run away when you face danger. Jesus does not panic in the middle of your storm. Jesus does not panic when a wolf tries to come and attack your life because he knows that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And if Christ is with you, there is nothing that can come against you, that can take you out, that can stop you. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Jesus knows this. See, Jesus is, he, he's not a shepherd that, that throws his sheep to the wolves as bait so he can get away. No, instead he thrust himself to the earth on Christmas Day to challenge sin and death and to look the devil in the eye and take back everything the enemy stole. Jesus was not afraid to go looking for you when you were lost, when you were broken. Jesus was not afraid to give it all so that you can be saved and set free. Jesus doesn't run for the fight, so no, neither should we. What fights are we running from? What fights are we straying away from? What fights are the things that we're trying not to face right now? Be like Jesus. Fearless. Charge into the ring. Charge into the battle. Because if he is for you, there is no one that can come against you. How many believe that at home? If you believe that, give God a shout of praise, a hand clap of praise. Which leads me to my third and third point here. Jesus cares for us when we are full of worry. Jesus cares for us when we are full of worry. Look at 1 Peter 5, 7. It says, pour out all your worries and stress upon him and leave them there. For he always tenderly cares for you. He says, pour out all your worries and your stress. I wonder how many of us are approaching this new year with caution and worry and stress. You know, we're watching the news 24-7 and they're telling us that 2021 is going to be worse. I've even heard of some... Uh, speakers or, or preachers that say we all need to lower our expectations for 2021. Why? Did our God all of a sudden lose power? Did our king all of a sudden lose some authority over what's going on in the world? Is he no longer sovereign? Is he no longer all-knowing? Did he forget what 2020 was going to look like? Does he not yet know what 2021 looks like? Is he asking, is he telling us, hey, let me know what happens when you get there? No, God is already there. He already knows what's going to take place. And if God's there already, we do not need to fear. We do not need to worry. Instead, we need to pour out all of our worries on him. 
I want to show you something really quick. I want the camera to come up here. I got the, I got the camera up here. Let me see. Can you guys, can you cut to this shot real here? You guys can see me, right? Hey, so I got this little illustration here. This kind of shows, take a look at this really quick. Take a look at this illustration. Right here, this is a jar. This jar right here, I don't want to drop this. This represents all of our worries, all of our stresses, all of the burdens that we were holding on to in the year 2020. Look how murky and dirty that looks. Can you get a closer shot of that? Look at that. Look at, that looks gross, right? Nasty. Well, this is what happens. This is what happens. When Jesus says, pour out all of your cares and concerns, he literally means pour it all out so that you can no longer have it in you. He says, give it to me because my cross was designed to bear every big worry and every little worry that you might have. So this is what happened. He got this whole thing and he says, pour it in, pour it in. God, are you sure? Everything, pour it all in. What about my finances? Pour it all in. What about my family? Pour it in. What about my loved ones that aren't? Pour it in. What about what's going to happen? Pour it in. What about my health? Pour it all. Pour it all in. Pour it all in. To the point we're free and it's all there. But sometimes, sometimes the enemy tries to remind you, remind you of all the things that have gone wrong or cause you to stress or worry about all the things that you don't know. And he uses these storms and these dangers and these other things to try and get you to forget how good God is and how much he loves you. So you know what he does? He says, why don't you take some of that worry back? Why don't you take back some of that stress? Why don't you go back over there where you buried it and dig it back up again and try to get some of that back in your life? Why don't you, why don't you, why don't you, uh, why don't you remember, remember all the bills you have to pay? Remember, remember, re remember how you're sick? Remember how, what the doctor said? Remember, uh, remember who left you? Remember all the things you went through? Remember all of these things? Pour back in, pour back in. The enemy tries to get us to pour it all back in, but the scripture says, pour it all. Pour it all. And it says this, I love this part of the scripture. It says, leave them there. And why did God have to tell us this? Why did God have to say, leave them there? Here's why. Because sometimes we try and pick it back up again. But that worry does not belong to you. That worry is not yours. Peace it belongs to you. Joy belongs to you. Hope belongs to you. Life belongs to you. And Christmas is a time that we remember that Jesus came to defeat every bondage in our lives, to give us hope, to give us faith. Every Everything that we've gone through, Jesus can overcome that. And he's doing that here and he's doing that now. Give God some praise if you believe that today. God did not fail. He didn't get it wrong. He didn't change his mind about his promises for you, but he tenderly cares for you. God knows all things, and he's the one who gave up his life to protect you and is stronger than anything you've ever faced, and he knows what's ahead, and still God is not afraid of the new year coming. So don't be afraid either because he knows it all. Look at John 16, 30. It says, now we understand that you know everything, God, there is to know. And we don't need to question you further. And everything you've taught us convinces us that you have come directly from God. He knows everything. He knows what's to come. Don't worry. Don't stress. Pour it all on him and never take it back. This is Christmas. This is Christmas, church. It's a reminder that he cares for us. And he will never stop tenderly caring for us. And he loves us. With all of his heart, he was willing to sacrifice his own life so that we can be saved and set free. Christmas season is a time to reflect on that. It's a reminder for all those that have asked God, God, where are you? Are you there? Do you even care? His answer to you today is yes, my child. Yes, my son. Yes, my daughter. I do care. I love you. I'm still here. I have not forgotten about you. I have a plan for you. It's for good and not evil. 
I have great things in store for you. Trust in me. Hope in me. Put your faith in me. And I will show you things that you've never seen before. I'm doing a new thing. Trust me in this. I got you. I got you. So we should respond with the same heart he has. We should welcome that care in our, in our heart. We, we should welcome the same love and care this Christmas season. And I leave you with this final scripture, 1 John chapter 4, verse 11. It says, delightfully loved ones, he loved us with such tremendous love. Then loving one another should be our way of life. If he loved us with such tremendous love, then loving one another should be our way of life. No one has ever gazed upon the fullness of God's splendor. But if we love one another, God makes his permanent home in us. And we make our permanent home in him. And his love is brought to its full expression in us. Let's make it a goal this Christmas season. No, Let's make it a way of life to love and care for others the way he loved and cared for us. See, the greatest expression of God's love in us is not just that we receive and we receive and we receive from him, but it's that we love others the way Christ loved us. Christmas is, is a time to remind us to love people to give to people, to reach out to someone you haven't heard from in a long time, to show mercy to someone that maybe has done you wrong, to forgive somebody that maybe has hurt you this year or has, has said something about you this year, to sacrifice for somebody that needs it this year. And it's a reminder to care for others the way Jesus cares for us. Christmas is that time. Let's not forget that. Let this be a season where we remember he loves us. He loves us so much. He loves you. He loves you and he pours out so much love in you that he desires that you express that love in others. People won't know God just out of the, just from thin air. They're going to know God through an expression of love. And how will he do that? How will he do that? Through his body, through you and I. Let's love God. Let's welcome his love in our hearts. And let's love others this Christmas season. Amen. I mean, if you receive that, just give God some praise today. Give him a hand clap. Now we're going into a new year and, and Christmas season. And I know so many of us have questions about what it's gonna hold for us. But sometimes we look so far ahead that we don't realize we're not even promised tomorrow. Someone watching this or maybe someone listening to this right now and I'm not speaking this over anyone, but it's very possible, and the word says this, that tomorrow is not promised. You, right now, listening, you may enter into eternity before we even see Christmas. Now, if we enter into eternity, if we could enter into eternity tomorrow, what does that mean for me? Does that mean I can make up for some of the bad things I did? Does that mean I just kind of my good out, let my good outweigh my bad because I think I'm more of a good person than I am a bad person. Unfortunately, none of that will qualify us for eternity with God in heaven. So you're telling me none of the good I do will qualify me for heaven? And even if I promise to do some spiritual community service or something where I, I make up for some of the sins I did, does that give me? No, none of that. Well, what does that mean then? Well, the Bible says this, the wages of our sin is death. And that doesn't just mean that we're going to die here on this earth, but death meaning eternal death, eternal pain, eternal suffering. Sin 
has a price on it. And the price is death. Have you sinned? I know the answer to that question. It's yes, because I have. Everyone listening to this, everyone around here right now, there's not a person you've met on this earth that has not sinned. We all owe that price on our heads. So then how, how can I have a relationship with God? Well, that's why God is so, so good and so loving. The Bible says that even while we were yet sinners, he sent Christ to die for us. On Christmas Day, he was born on this earth for this very purpose, that 33 years later, he would die a gruesome death on the cross. But it wouldn't be done because three days after that, he would raise from the dead and he would pay for every penalty of sin and his blood would now be the ransom for our lives. The good news is this. The good news is, yes, we do need salvation. Yes, we do owe a big price on our head. But the good news is that Jesus paid that price. And you can receive that tonight. You can receive the free gift of salvation and eternal life today. All you have to do is put your faith in Jesus and repent from your old ways. Repent just means to turn away and to open your heart to him. I'm pleading with you right now, don't wait another day. You do not know if you'll have tomorrow. I don't know if I'll have tomorrow. Don't wait another day. If that's you, you're saying, I'm ready to give my life to Jesus. I'm ready to surrender it all to him. I'm ready to give it all at his feet. I'm ready to pour out all of my sin on the cross. I'm ready to give it all to him and be washed by his blood and be forgiven. Oh, but, but I still have so much in my life to fix. I'm still so messed up. I, I still have all these things. Don't worry about that. That's God's part. Let him handle that. Your part is just to come to his feet, to kneel at the altar, and to say, God, I surrender to you. I give you my heart. I give you everything. If that's you right now in your home, and, and you're saying, I want to receive Jesus. I want that love. I want that forgiveness. I, I want to know that if I die tomorrow, that I would spend eternity with him in heaven, not because I'm a good person, but because he's good and he forgives me and he cares about me and he loves me. If that's you right where you are, I want you to do something when I count to three. I want you to raise your hand. It doesn't matter what family member or friend is there at your house right now. It doesn't matter who's sitting next to you. Do this boldly and unashamed because it's going to be the best decision you ever made. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand. One, two, three. Raise your hand right now. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand your hand. Don't be ashamed. Put your hand up. Don't be ashamed. Put your hand up. Put your hand up. Put your hand up. Now, if you raise your hand right now, I want you to say this prayer with me. Repeat this right now in your heart. Say, God, say this with me. Come on. You can say it out loud. Say, God, I give you my heart. Forgive me of all of my sin. Forgive me, Lord, for hurting your heart. I believe that you died on the cross so that I can be forgiven. I believe that you rose from the dead so I can be set free. I receive you, Jesus, to be my Lord and my Savior. I will never be the same, not because I'm perfect, but because you're perfect and you are good. Thank you, God, for loving me and for caring for me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, right there. Give God a hand, a hand clap of praise. If you said that prayer and you really meant it, I just want to say congratulations. There's angels in heaven celebrating right now at your salvation. There's people all over in heaven that are excited because you made the decision, the greatest decision you could ever make. I want you to take another step and maybe watch party host if you're there and someone in your watch party or your family raise their hand. I want you to help them. Go to this website called igotsaved.com. You'll see it's just a simple form, but what it really is is your next step. Your next step is this class called Starting at the Way. It's how you grow in your relationship with God. You learn what it means to be a Christian and to follow Jesus. And we help you. We give you a coach. We help you get baptized. So go to it right away, right now, igotsaved.com. And let us know. We want to congratulate you and love you.
God bless you guys. We love you, everyone who's watching right now. Don't forget, Sunday, Pastor Marco is going to bring an awesome word for us. So you're going to want to be in-house or online. And then next Wednesday, we're going to have our online Wednesday service. And then, of course, New Year's Eve. On New Year's Eve from 10 p.m. to midnight, countdown with the way. That's going to be online as well. We love you so much. Have a wonderful night, everybody. God bless you and take care.